Hey guys, I'm Scythian, and today I have an exciting update to my remote access setup for the deeper devices. In my last video on this topic, we set up a Raspberry Pi to allow us remote access to our deeper device, which for me is located in a data center, but this setup works for anywhere. Now, that original setup works beautifully, and there's nothing wrong with it, but for those unfamiliar with the Raspberry Pi or Linux-based software, it can be a bit of a daunting task. So, in an effort to make it easier for both setup and management, I've put together this video which goes over setting up an OpenWRT router. OpenWRT is just an open source Linux operating system which offers much more customization than traditional routers with individual company software. So, for my OpenWRT router of choice, I went with the Barrel by GLINet. This router was pointed out to me by a member of the community. It's beautifully compact, easily configurable, and relatively cheap. What makes this setup easier is the fact that the entire process can be done in under two minutes using only your phone. While the device costs 77 US dollars, more than double the cost for a basic Raspberry Pi 4, you actually end up saving $108 overall compared to the Pi setup in my last video. That setup included a Pi 4, a case, power supply, SD cards, HDMI cable, touchscreen for the remote setup, and a keyboard, totaling at $185 US dollars before tax. So not only is this setup easier, but it's cheaper too. It's literally just the router. GL does make even cheaper routers for around $25, which I do have a few on order but they run an older version of the software, and I've been told they will very likely require a cron script to keep the network active, to prevent the deeper from going into sleep mode. Most older OpenWRT routers seem to have this requirement. It's very easy to do, but the point of this video was to provide you guys with the easiest plug and play option, to prevent the need for any console commands or extensive setup. Who knows, maybe we'll get lucky and that cheaper version will be as plug and play as this new one, but I'm not going to hold my breath on that. I will do a review on the cheaper router when it arrives, so if you want to hang tight and wait to see that review before you purchase one, it could end up saving you even more money. That said, the cheaper one does provide a slower network, so if you were planning to plug something in after it, like I am, then this barrel will still be the way to go, but if it's just going to be an endpoint, then it's only $25, which is going to save you even more money. I've been testing the barrel for a couple weeks now and just running it in its basic plug and play nature. With no scripts added and no devices connected to the network, it still managed to keep the Deeper Connect Mini awake 24 7. I verified this by monitoring the Deeper wallet on the Deeper Chain Explorer, where I continued to receive my daily mining rewards and even gaining credit score, proving the device was online. So let's get down to it. Quickly going over the box, there's not much detail other than the main points listed on the side. We've got open WRT software, 3 gigabit ports, dual band Wi Fi, a micro SD card expansion slot capable of handling up to 512 gigabytes of storage, VPN and DNS encryption, IPv6, and Tor compatibility. Inside the box, we have your standard instructions, a USB-C power adapter with other changeable outlet ends sold separately, a CAT6 Ethernet cable, and the barrel router. Onto the device, we have two Wi-Fi antennas, one on each side. The three Ethernet ports consist of one WAN and two LAN, a USB 3.0 slot, and a USB-C power port on the back. A programmable mode button and a reset button on one side, and the SD card slot on the other side. Connect the router to the deeper device via the WAN port and plug both devices in. Once the device boots up, connect to the Wi Fi using the info on the instruction card, head to 192.168.8.1, and go through the basic setup, which legitimately consists of just making an admin password. But don't forget to also head to the wireless tab and change the default Wi Fi password. Our next step is to head to the VPN section and select WireGuard Server. Click Initialize. Turn on Allow Access Local Network. This will allow you to log into the router's local IP remotely. Head to the Management tab and add a user profile, one per device you plan to access it from. 
Scan the QR code with your phone in the WireGuard app and enter the profile name. You can also repeat this step if you want a profile for your PC, or you can just export the file and import it on your PC. Head back to the Status tab and click Start. That's it, this setup is just that easy. It may take a minute or two to start up, but once everything is in place, you're good to go. Note, if you are using this setup at another home behind a different router, just be sure to forward the 51820 UDP port to allow the WireGuard server access to the internet. I can't get over how much easier and just as secure, if not more secure, this setup is compared to the Pi. The router contains a ton of other features that aren't really relevant to the purpose of this video, but if you guys want, I can definitely cover them in a separate video. I just want to say GLINet makes a really great quality router that complements our remote deeper setup perfectly. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the deeper Discord or Telegram channel, links in the description down below. Until next time, keep your data safe, and I'll see you in the next video.